This investigation is kindly sponsored by the community of Global Wellness. Now more than ever, our world can feel like an overwhelming place. Everyday stresses affect our mental well-being and prevent our ability to work or just live in a meaningful way. If you're looking to stop just surviving and instead build a life of purpose, harmony, and joy, find out more about the community of Global Wellness at the end of this video. Across the myriad of threats to ever assail themselves against the bastions of the Imperium, there have always been those that lay beyond human understanding. Through the spectacular carnage unleashed by the Thyrus, the weaponized entropy of the Hrud, or the asymmetrical corruption of the Saruthi, mankind has learned at terrible cost that the alien is exactly that. Understanding the Xenos is an impossibility. To try is to invite disaster. The Tyranids are the ultimate validation of this philosophy. Since their first, vast high fleets entered the galaxy, the Imperium has struggled to recognize even a fragment of their true nature. They were at first believed to be a non-sentient intelligence, their actions driven by instinct or the barest semblance of thought. Scholars asserted that they were a supreme predator, driven by a powerfully reactive mind, but ultimately just a complicated animal. The Tyranids were like the ants of ancient terror, or the thought trees of Demaria, unaware of their own actions and completely devoid of soul. It was a logical interpretation, but to compare the Tyranids to any other form of life is to beget false truths. The hive mind of the Tyranids is not an empty intellect. It is deliberate, considered, and far too large to be ever perceived by men. But every now and then, to those that study the Tyranid race, glimpses of this intellect might be observed. And perhaps ironically, they are most easily recognized not within the hive fleets of the Tyranid swarm itself, but within the planetary systems that lay in its path. For every world that expends its might in a futile gesture of defiance, there is another that welcomes the hive fleets with open arms. Its citizens celebrate the darkening of their skies with a rapturous ecstasy, crying out in adulation to the endless invasion spores and hive spire-sized tentacles that envelop their world. To witness such a thing is to understand and accept, if only for the briefest of moments, the total supremacy of the hive mind and the ultimate victory of its gene-stealer cults. Rebellions, revolutions, insurgencies, and uprisings are common across the Imperium of Man. They might be driven by the cruelty of imperial policy, schisms within the ecclesiarchy, or rivalries between cartels and corporate warlords. Many are the work of secret societies in service to the ruinous powers, or ideologically aligned to Xenos races working to annex mankind's domains. The gene stealer cults operate similarly to these latter instances but their methods and goals are so entirely alien that any comparison becomes just as fruitless as in the case of the Tyranids themselves. A typical gene stealer cult might be categorized as a propagated fifth column. Its members have been infected by Tyranid genetic structures and now work to undermine the national interest of their respective society. They do so in cooperation with elements of the Tyranids themselves, gathering forces in secret that can be mobilized to assist an external attack. Through systematic infiltration, sabotage, disinformation, espionage, and terrorism, a gene stealer cult's ultimate goal is to prevent any kind of organized resistance to the arrival of a Tyranid high fleet. A successful cult will need to work within an existing societal framework, and therefore no two are entirely identical. Yet, regardless of what kind of world or civilization in which they operate, all follow the same essential cycles of propagation and expansion. Every cult begins with the arrival of an eponymous gene stealer, a Tyranid life form that excels in infiltration and predation. A gene stealer can arrive on a world in a multitude of ways, but their exceptional patience and subtlety makes them particularly adept at stowing away on spacecraft of every kind. However, they achieve planetfall. The first steps of a gene stealer will be to abduct and infect individuals within the native population. 
Through the use of an elongated ovipositor, tyrannid genetic structures are inserted into an unwilling host, who then becomes enthralled to the gene stealer's will. Believing it to be a kind of messianic savior, those infected will actively assist the gene stealer in the abduction of others, creating the first fledgling base of a new cult. In addition to the fanatical devotion exhibited by these hosts, the tyranid genes within them mutate their reproductive systems, ensuring their offspring are a grotesque mixture between the victim race and the gene stealer itself. Infected offspring gradually lose their more alien features across successive generations, and might eventually appear completely normal within their host society. The offspring of the fourth generation, however, will give birth to pure strain gene stealers, and the cycle will begin anew. In its earliest stages, a cult will need to operate within the fringes of society, lest its existence be discovered. It will attempt to influence subjugated minorities, or any subcultures or countercultures whose activities are largely ignored by the local government. By appealing to the downtrodden, the cult can brand itself as the means to achieve a better life, and gain greater access to prospective hosts. Not every member of the cult will necessarily be infected with the Tyranid DNA, for such an act is instead reserved for those most capable of expanding the cult's economic, military, or political power. Most fringe groups, such as mutants, criminals, and the uneducated, make for poor hosts in this regard, and most who align themselves to the cult will instead be exploited and then disregarded. Years, decades, or even centuries after its establishment, a gene stealer cult will reach a tipping point. This moment is often hard to define, but can be characterized by two distinct elements. The first is the elevation of a gene stealer into a patriarch, centralizing the loose hierarchy of the cult into a strict and disciplined organization. A patriarch is always the oldest pure strain gene stealer within the group, either the initial creature that created the first infected, or a member of an older generation, if the first gene stealer did not survive. The second element crucial to the next stage of a cult is the ability to hide its operations and more obvious hybrids from external scrutiny. When both elements are present within a gene stealer cult, it can move from the fringes of society and into the mainstream. A cult in this stage will still be actively concerned with the propagation of its members, but this will slowly become a secondary effort compared to that of preparing their host world for the coming of a Tyranid High Fleet. The level of technological development and the societal nature they exist within will heavily affect how this preparation is conducted. On worlds in which the reigning government exercises effective and systemic oversight of its population, a cult might need to remain a secret society without any type of public front. Security and obfuscation will be paramount, with the denial of membership and the creation of secret symbols, rites, and rituals used to continue the group's operations. Such worlds, however, are rare across the galaxy, and the gene stealer cults will often accept a slightly higher chance of being detected in exchange for the freedom and opportunities that arise while operating in the open. Political movements, trade unions, healthcare providers, athletic groups, economic institutions, places of higher learning, community service, and social welfare organizations, any part of society that can influence how that society functions might become the public front of a gene stealer cult. On less developed worlds, the cult may adopt the facade of a noble family, hunting lodge, or warrior band. Whatever the case, a cult will always prefer to infiltrate and subsume an existing institution with long-standing ties to its community. When this is not feasible, it is also capable of exploiting native discontent or public feelings to create something entirely new. It is within religious organizations, however, that the cults can be the most effective and least discreet. Part of this is driven by practicalities, as religious organizations can usually demand tithes from their followers, which in turn might be used to further the goals of the cult. But a belief in the divine is also a near universal concept and one uniquely susceptible to manipulation by a gene stealer patriarch. Regardless of their origins, 
Most cults will eventually attempt to become some kind of spiritual body. Once this has been accomplished, the Patriarch's messianic role, its rise amongst the downtrodden, and even the arrival of the Tyranid High Fleets can all be reframed into a courageous, uplifting, populist rhetoric, promising the transcendence of mortal weakness. Within this narrative, the Tyranids are worshipped as star gods, children of the Void, or some other heavenly variation thereof. While this religion is sometimes practiced in direct opposition to whatever spiritual beliefs dominate the host world, in some instances, prevailing religious dogma is incorporated into the cult's teachings, and then refined to be more supportive of its aims. In the case of worlds under the tenets of the Imperial Creed, this can manifest in the belief that the Star Gods are an aspect of the Emperor or his Primarch Sons, the Omnisire, or any number of Imperial Saints. The final stage of a Gene Stealer cult is a planet-wide uprising. As Tyranid Hive fleets approach, the link between the Hive Mind and the Patriarch grows more refined, and the collaboration between them more sophisticated. At a moment determined to cause the greatest disruption to the planet's defense, the cult abandons every pretext and openly attacks those still outside its influence. This moment is the culmination of exhaustive and meticulous planning. It coincides with extensive sabotage across every level of society in which the cult maintained influence. Those who would oppose the cult and the high fleet they serve find their supply lines severed, key officials assassinated, while critical institutions and military organizations have turned their weapons on one another. A particularly successful cult might find that their rhetoric has galvanized even those who have not been indoctrinated. Normal citizens can be simply caught up in the fervor of revolution and rush to join the cult, even while wholly ignorant of their supposed beliefs and goals. It is only when the High Fleet descends that their true nature is revealed. To the Gene Stealer cults, the High Fleets are the ultimate vindication of their faith and the fulfillment of their prophecies. Enraptured by the presence of the Tyranid Swarm, they rush out in a devotional frenzy, and for a brief moment, they fight alongside their Star Gods against the last bastions of the planet's defenses. This is always fleeting, however. Gene Stealer cults are by their very nature, temporary. And once the Patriarch has been fully reabsorbed into the Hive Fleet, it is no longer a divine savior or loving father, and instead just another creature within the endless swarms of the Tyranids. Now free of its psychic hold, the cult realizes with terrible clarity their true purpose and their tragic role in cultivating the seeds of their own annihilation. Every successful gene stealer cult will end this same way, its members devoured and regurgitated into acidic digestion pools that bubble across the ruins of their former home. Though every cult aspires to follow this same path, there remains the possibility that forceful opposition, exposure, or a multitude of other factors can stymie their progress or set it on an altogether different trajectory. Cults can fail to achieve the growth necessary for their survival, or never reach the critical tipping point that allows them to infiltrate mainstream society. In such cases, it might instead attempt to portray itself as a noble band of freedom fighters or romanticized outlaws. Gene Stealer cults have also been known to fall into unremitting conflict against other claimants for their host world, whether they be the local authorities, rival gangs, chaos, or other Xenos organizations, and in some extraordinary cases, even rival Gene Stealer cults. Their uprisings can also be triggered prematurely, forced to engage in open warfare after running out of ways to remain hidden, or mobilized to defeat an entirely separate, foreign invasion. In some instances, worlds infested by Gene Stealer cults are too distant from the Hive Fleets, or a Hive Fleet has been destroyed before its arrival. In these cases, the cult will attempt to win control over its world through its own methods, or begin to spread its control across neighboring systems. Entire sectors can fall under the control of an unusually successful cult, creating Tyranid empires hidden within their host civilization. In such cases, the cult might have assumed the duties of planetary governance, 
These worlds are noted for their unusual obedience and productivity, a subtle method of erasing any suspicion as to their true nature. Though a cult can take many different forms depending on its circumstances, their internal hierarchies are remarkably consistent. A gene stealer patriarch will always exercise complete authority over the organization, but they are assisted in this by unique hybrid creatures born to the cult across the generations. Amagus is a particularly intelligent gene stealer hybrid born from psychically active species within the fourth generation of cult offspring. Amagus serves as the cult's public face and leader. They are intelligent, charismatic, and well-suited to lending legitimacy to whatever institution the cult is using as a public front. A Primus, by contrast, serves as the cult's general and commanding officer, bestowed with an inhuman dexterity and certainty of purpose. Like the Magus, they are natural leaders, masterminding the capture of weapons, vehicles, and whatever other materiel the cult might require. Beneath this leadership caste lies a bewildering assortment of hybrids, gene stealers, and other more bizarre creatures. Some have been engineered to perform the role of iterators, gene manipulators, assassins, saboteurs, bodyguards, shock troops, or infiltrators. Even pure strain tyranid bioforms can be enthralled to the will of a patriarch. The lowest tier of the cult's hierarchy consists of those aligned to its vision, but unaware of its true nature. These allies were likely gained during the cult's early days, the suppressed minorities, mutants, or other groups that provided an early foundation but became unessential when the cult gained legitimacy. The history of the gene stealer cults within the galaxy, as studied by the Imperium, is a contentious subject and one continually rewritten as new schools of thought and new evidence take hold. It was originally believed that the cults did not arise within the Imperium until the arrival of the first Hive Fleets, and yet similarities can be seen in many heretical organizations that predate the Tyranids by millennia. Gene Stealers are now believed to have been a vanguard of sorts, seeding the galaxy with cults well in advance of the Hive Fleets themselves. Imperial record keeping is notoriously inaccurate, and it is impossible to say how many cults believed to have been spread by Chaos Worshippers, Beastmen, Mutants, Demons, or other Xeno species might have actually been the work of Gene Stealers. By the dawn of the 42nd millennium, the Ordo Xenos has acknowledged and codified six major cults within the Imperium. Each has molded itself to subvert a unique aspect of Imperial society, and has now spread across hundreds of worlds. One such cult even briefly emerged on Holy Terror itself, before its supposed eradication by the Adeptus Custodes. Of greater concern, however, are the cults that remain undetected, and it is likely that many thousands are now embedded within Imperial worlds, leeching their economic and military strength in preparation for the High Fleets. It is not the Imperium alone that has been infiltrated. Eldari Craftworlds, Torellian Mercenary Companies, Tau Septs, Krut Warbands, and countless other Xenos organizations have also been known to unwittingly host Gene Stealer cults. Even the Orcs have been affected, although their species is uniquely inimical to hybridization and the lifespan of Orc cults is typically brief. Perhaps the strangest cult, however, has emerged in Komara, the dark city of the Drukhari. This is not the work of the Gene Stealers, but rather the Drukhari themselves, who through the terrible art of fleshcrafting, have woven Tyranid DNA into their own bodies willingly. It is said that this group is slowly falling under the sway of the hive mind, and if the Tyranids can establish a presence in Komara, then there is truly no safe place in the universe. Perhaps the greatest achievement of the Gene Stealer cults is the tide of uncertainty they have unleashed across the galaxy. Every day, on uncounted worlds, people go missing, equipment is stolen, and buildings marked by graffiti of uncertain origin. Every year, entire worlds are noted to have grown unusually docile and productive. And every decade, entire star systems are cut off from their parent civilizations. 
Most of these occurrences have completely ordinary explanations. The local criminal element, societal shifts, or storms in the warp. Others, however, to those who have learned to recognize them, are glimpses. Glimpses into the plans of a terrible and vast intellect, too large to be perceived by any mortal mind. The key to survival will be in determining which are which. Thanks again to the community of Global Wellness for sponsoring this video. I think we've all had moments in our lives where we just don't feel like we're living up to our potential. The modern world can be an exciting and fulfilling place, but only when we learn to put aside distractions and really focus on what matters. Of course, sometimes it's hard to know what that even is. For over seven years, the community of Global Wellness has helped hundreds of thousands of people just like you discover what's right, what's real, and what's ideal. Visit any of our hundreds of wellness centers in countries across the globe, and you'll instantly feel the palpable sense of excitement and energy of a grand vision that's rapidly coming to life. In our planned communities, friendships spark and groups gather. Shows and events create a true celebration of old world leisure and sophistication, where refinement and culture triumph over the little indignities of daily life. Everywhere there is a sense of rhythm and balance, that life and nature are finally aligned. The community of Global Wellness is looking for highly cultured, business-leading, and fashion-forward bon vivants. We're looking for someone like you, and joining our community has never been easier. Forget wait lists. Forget long-winded questionnaires. The only thing standing between you and a life of purpose is, well, you. So if you'd like to experience the peace of mind that comes with living a life of intention, all you have to do is mark your door with this symbol. A representative of the community of Global Wellness will be with you sooner than you think.